in games, just like a lot of things in life, timing really matters. See how weird that was? <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, and welcome to my first video in my series of Godly Gaming, How to Become a Game God. I haven't worked out the full title yet, but I'm sure you got the theme of it. Today, we're going to be talking about timing and how important it is. Now, we're just going to be talking about base level timing. I'm not going to get into a lot of different areas here because I want to build you like a starting foundation the same way that I kind of learn things. Obviously not at the same pace that I learned. You don't have to learn as slowly as I did because I started before the internet, had to piece a lot of this together. A lot of games theory wasn't uh, as prevalent as it is now. So basically, we're going to talk about timing. Uh, what I'm going to use as a specific example for this video is going to be using Magic the Gathering, okay? I'm going to use the combat, basically, as the, one of the, the best examples here. When it comes to timing, the whole idea, and we're, again, uh, what we're talking about here specifically are games where you do not have perfect information. And if you don't know what I mean by that, think of a game like chess, okay? In chess, you know what every single piece can do, right? You know that inherently. When you're playing chess, you've already been taught this is what each piece does. And at any moment, you can look at the board and you have all of the information. You can see where every piece can move. You can see every move that your opponent can make. You can try and parse out what their strategy is based on the board state, but you have absolute information aside from what's going on in your opponent's head. But in terms of the game information, you have 100% of the information available to you. Magic the Gathering in games like Force of Will, these card games and other board games even, they have more of a random element where you do not have all the information. And that changes how you play a game, right? It makes a big difference. When you know ahead of time what your opponent is capable of doing versus not being sure, that is going to change how you act. And really, what it boils down to when it comes to timing and what's most important about this is it's all about information. When it comes to games, it's all about decision making and information. Aside from absolutely random elements like die rolls and things that you can't control, it boils down perfectly to information. So, Timing matters because of information. The, the best thing to do, basically, is to wait until the absolute last moment to do everything. It is a situation where he who acts last acts best. And remember, we're talking about the most, this is the most fundamental starting for timing. So there's going to be exceptions to this, but this is an excellent starting point for those of you who have not spent much time thinking about this. Now, the reason that acting last is best is because you have the most information. So I'm gonna pick what I believe is a fairly simple situation. You're gonna use a Magic the Gathering game where your opponent has out a few creatures and you have just picked up a card that is a creature kill spell, okay? I'm gonna call it the God Killer, all right? So this literally can kill anything. This creature kill spell that you've picked up can be used at any time and can kill any creature. Now there's a big threatening creature you're really worried about on the board and a lot of people's first instinct is to pick up the kill spell and remove it, the biggest threat, right away. Now, if there wasn't going to be a situation where they could use the creature at all, the best case scenario is actually to wait until the end of your opponent's turn. Most of the time, when it comes to doing things in Magic the Gathering for timing, the absolute best time to be doing them is at the end of your opponent's turn. If you can play Magic at the end of your opponent's turn, you have a significant advantage because you have all the information gained from the entirety of their turn and they have the smallest window to respond to what you're doing. Now, in a scenario where you have one of these big creature kill spells, obviously, we're going to be looking at more of a case where they're going to want to be attacking you with a creature, right? You're not you're not going to get the opportunity to wait for the optimal moment, which is the end of your opponent's turn. So then when does the next optimal latest moment become? Basically, you always want to be looking for the latest moment to play a spell. If that's not at the end of your opponent's turn, you key into when that is. So let's look at the example from the attack phase. So you've drawn this kill spell. You've resisted the urge to kill one of your opponent's creatures immediately. You've gone on to their turn. Now they are going to go ahead and attack you. Now, you could kill their creature right at the beginning of their turn, but that is not the best option, and here's why. Let's just imagine that, let's just picture it as actually you're in an alley, 
and somebody has hey, these dudes that they're about to send and come pound you in the face in the alley, okay? And there's little side alleys and everything. So you've got these dudes just standing there and you've got a gun with one bullet in it and you have perfect aim, okay? And you know you can shoot one of these guys basically right in the head and take them down. That's how this goes, okay? So before this guy does the little go forwards and get him maneuver that's gonna send all the guys charging towards you at once because that's how it works in magic everybody charges for you at once at the last moment though people can cast creatures that have haste and things like that that's the equivalent of at the last second right before the guy goes get him boys another dude steps out of the side alley you didn't see and he's twice as big as the other guys and you're just like oh i shouldn't have shot that other guy oh no and another thing is is when the guy goes, get him, boys, that's not when you shoot him. What you want to do is you want to be like the people in the movies. You want to be that cool guy who at the last moment, they're charging up, and right as he gets to you, you just put it right to his forehead and blow it away. And the reason for that is fast effects, instant speed abilities, the ability for your opponent to play boosts on their creatures or to put negatives on any kind of blocking creatures you have, even though we're not using blocking creatures in this current timing scenario. So... In the scenario I just laid out of the dudes running down the alley for you, we've already covered to wait until the guy points, right? To see who's actually going to be running in the group. But you want to wait at the last second because what's happened is this dude has also secretly given one of these guys a set of brass knuckles. And you don't know who. And when they get close enough, at, at some unknown moment that you're not going to really get to see ahead of time, the guy who has the brass knuckles is going to pull it out. Now, you'll have enough time to respond and get the guy with the brass knuckles, but if you've already gone all trigger happy and shot one of the dudes running at you, and then somebody else pulls out the brass knuckles, which represents like a creature boost in Magic the Gathering, then you're going to get hit harder. So the best thing to do is to wait until the absolute last moment, see who it is who's pulling out the brass knuckles, put the gun up to their head if that's the best choice, and then pull the trigger. That is the absolute best moment to do things in combat like that. You want to be waiting. Obviously, when it comes to things like if your opponent has counter magic or if you want to kill one of their creatures in advance because you have multiple blocking creatures and you want to make the combat math more hard for them that's a different scenario and we'll go into those situations more in the future but when it comes to magic the gathering specifically and most games that i've played really the best situation is the one where you have the most information to go on and in Magic the Gathering, that's waiting to the last moment. And in, that's at the end of your opponent's turn. In Force of Will, that point actually shifts to the beginning of your own turn. Because it's all based on the untap phase when you get your resources back. So Magic the Gathering, the best point to do something is at the tail end of your opponent's turn. Because right at... Like, if your opponent has said, this is the end of my turn, I'm done. Now, the only thing that can happen is things that can happen in instant speed, which were the only things you could do during your opponent's turn because you can't app, you can't operate at sorcery speed during your opponent's turn. You can only do instance during your opponent's turn. So you've narrowed it down to that tiny window at the very end of his turn where he can only do things at the same speed as you. And on top of that, right after you're done all this, the absolute next thing, next thing that happens is you untap all your resources. So you're prepared to go again. Now, in Force of Will, the untap phase actually happens after the draw phase so the best time to do things in force of will is the beginning of your turn right before you untap everything and that allows you to keep your creatures untapped in force of will there's a rule that allows you to attack tapped creatures directly so creaching keeping your creatures untapped will keep them safe until your turn so it really doesn't matter which of these two games you go the same logic applies in terms of he who acts last acts best wait for the last moment to get the most information and then after a while once you understand that more then you can start to play around with the concept of oh hey actually in this case it's better if i do it at this time it's better if i do it at this time but you need to learn first of all to resist the gut urge to use what you get right away when you get a big creature kill spell your first your first urge is to kill the biggest creature on the board when you get counter spells your first urge is to counter the first spell you can with it and i've seen this time and again i've played against people who are playing counter spell decks and all i have to do is lead with a spell that's good enough to draw out a counter spell but not quite good enough to actually like not my best card i should say not the biggest threat i have just good enough to draw a counter spell out, and they'll hit it right away and then i put out the real spell and that's because that that's a matter of timing too but that's when you move up to the next level and i don't want to get too deep into that and confuse you guys or add more to this because this generally this genuinely i should say is meant to be the base level let's talk about timing so remember the simple phrase he who acts last acts best 
acts best. It's great when I'm saying, remember this simple phrase that I can't say properly. Good Lord, I got to spend some time practicing. He who acts. <laughs> oh God, let's, let's keep it going. He who acts last, acts best. What is best in life, Conan? To act last. To crush your enemies, to drive them before you, to hear the lamentations of the women! Alright my friends, we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Dalfour, and together we are the sixth colour of magic. <laughs> <laughs>